And Leslie Picker has the details on NYCB. Leslie. Hey, Dom. Yeah, so it, it appears to be that this would be an equity capital raise uh, and that they've reached out to a variety of investment firms. My understanding in talking with uh, a couple of indirect sources over the last few minutes or so is that uh, this is likely uh, a lot of these conversations are more in the private realm as opposed to public investors uh, and that they've actually been going on for quite some time because one of my big questions was, why is this coming out on a Wednesday? Typically, when something like this happens, it would be pulled together over a weekend because if it, it does leak to the market, uh, something like this could happen. You can see shares down more than 42 percent. So it sounds like these conversations have been ongoing. Uh, and that was actually something when the company hosted a conference call uh, earlier last month uh, after Moody's downgraded uh, some of its credit ratings. Uh, the the chairman at the, the executive chairman at the time, who was newly appointed, Sandro Danello, ultimately became CEO last week. But at the time, he hosted this conference call with analysts, and he said basically everything was on the table in terms of shoring up confidence in this company. So a capital raise uh, is certainly something that people have been kind of questioning for quite some time. Uh, an analyst, at least one analyst, put in a report that. Um, you know, it was possible that an equity capital raise could be could be coming. There are other options as well that they could consider. But um, at least according to reports from The Wall Street Journal and Reuters, uh, this is one that is uh, in focus right now and in a raise at these depressed valuations, $1.86 a share um, would be obviously dilutive. Uh, to shareholders, um, you know, at these levels since they've plummeted uh, so significantly this year. Don. Also interesting because that kind of bit of news, like you said, would make a capital raise much cheaper for somebody who would look to come in and to eject that capital at these depressed prices overall. This is also, Leslie, I mean, you, you've covered a lot of these regional banks and, and certainly the failures from last fall. These are some of the levels kind of below that $2, $3 per share mark where there starts to become speculation, at least, about deal talks, right, about maybe who's going to come in and buy them, what it could look like. Outside of a direct infusion from an outside source, is there a chance this thing just gets taken over? I, don't, I haven't heard anything about actual takeover talks at these levels. I mean, uh, there were a whole host of regional stocks that were a dollar a share during the crisis, and ultimately they rebounded, and they're still with us today. Uh, so it's really difficult to tell kind of which way the fork in the road goes for New York Community Bank. Um, but obviously, it's, it's a dire situation. It's one in which, you know, there are likely a bunch of investment firms that kind of play in this area are taking a look. But, um, you know, there are asset sales that could be on the table in order to kind of tighten up that balance sheet a bit more, uh, discussions with investors. Um, it sounds like a lot of those are involving private investors at this juncture. Um, so, you know, we'll see what happens. But it, it's obviously a very precarious situation and a, a plummet of 42 percent today certainly makes things even more challenging for this company.